Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, Flexible Always On Mobile Apps, Building Enterprise Mobile Apps for Microsoft Dynamics Users. My name is Glenn Johnson and I'm joined today by Ryan Beck from Magic Software. I'm a Senior Vice President in the Marketing Area for Magic Software and Ryan Beck is a Senior Consultant in our Professional Services uh, Organization. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. We're going to be addressing a topic that we hear about a lot from customers, which is how they can have uh, mobile apps that uh, are available uh, in an offline manner, that they're always on, that they're able to uh, handle highly uh, uh, scalable requirements for large numbers of uh, users and transactions, uh, and uh, the uh, reliable and have the uh, operational integrity uh, that's needed for today's enterprise mobility requirements. And as we talk about Microsoft Dynamics today, we'll be referring to the full range of Microsoft Dynamics applications, including uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and uh, both uh, online and on-premise uh, versions, as well as uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX uh, ERP, uh, Microsoft Dynamics NAV and Microsoft Dynamics uh, GP. So as we look at uh, all of this today, uh, we'll be uh, looking at uh, a number of different use cases and cross-industry examples, uh, which I think uh, will help us to sort of get an idea of what's possible, what we can do to create a mobile app that's somehow tied to our back-end uh, Microsoft Dynamics system, uh, and then look at how uh, the movement is towards the need for cross-channel uh, mobile development that's always on uh, that can leverage a single skill set in a way that's effective for your organization. So first we'll be looking at what's possible and then we'll be looking at how uh, we can do it. So in terms of the use cases, there are a number of trending use cases for uh, enterprise mobility uh, and we see this uh, across uh, the industry in a variety of different application environments. So one in five enterprises has made creating a mobile app uh, a top uh, IT priority for 2014. And we know that these core business functions that uh, are discussed here are among uh, the leaders in the areas where people are needing to create apps, e-commerce, CRM, collaboration, ERP, and supply chain management. Studies have sh shown that nearly half of all mobile users have purchased a digital product online. Um, many of you obviously have already done that. One in four have bought clothing, one in five have purchased travel, entertainment, physical products, mostly with credit cards. And so we see increasing uh, use, uh, and uh, this is uh, a trend that uh, is projected to increase uh, over time. Meanwhile, even things like mobile payments uh, is increasing, which is different from credit card payments, but actual using your mobile device as your uh, payment uh, solution. For example, 25% of all airlines now accept mobile payments in addition to credit cards. So in the area of e-commerce, we're starting to see a number of uh, interesting changes. And then we're also uh, seeing that in the area of CRM. Uh, concerns over security have slowed the adoption of mobile CRM uh, by small and medium enterprises. Uh, according to research by Maximizer, which shows that 57% of companies who viewed uh, concerns over security as an obstacle to adoption. Um, we probably know this intuitively. If you read in the media, you're going to see lots of articles about um, the concerns that people have over um, mobile and security, uh, as well as cloud and security. And so uh, this is obviously something that anyone who's implementing this needs to address uh, very seriously is the security issues related to mobile apps. And nevertheless, uh, reports by Nucleus Research do show that uh, salesperson productivity jumps by more than 25% when something like social features and mobile access are added uh, to CRM systems. So CRM can benefit greatly uh, from uh, mobility, uh, and yet there are concerns. And so we want to make sure that we do uh, mobile CRM the right way. And uh, that's uh, part of what we're talking about here today. So when we look at uh, something like unified communications uh, in the area of collaboration, uh, the apps are reportedly you know, very poorly utilized by the users. And this means that there is a need for apps uh, 
Or it doesn't mean, however, that there isn't a need for apps that can help people collaborate and incorporate social features. It just means that unified communications hasn't been uh, the thing that's really uh, picked up. So top enterprise, uh, enterprise collaboration features for apps seem to be things like workflow and approvals, document reviews, scheduling, and unified communication. So unified communication uh, is, is not uh, the killer app that a lot of people thought it would be for mobile, um, but we are seeing that there's a need for specific purpose collaboration apps which are gaining wider acceptance than vaguely defined broad tools. Now we also know that uh, in the area of ERP uh, there's a need for integration, and so that's a big part of what we're talking about today when it comes to the Microsoft Dynamics uh, ERP uh, line. The mobile sales order entry apps that integrate with ERP systems uh, still need to have beautiful design. Uh, tablet app design needs to keep in mind that the app is likely to be shared with over-the-shoulder viewers. If you're using a tablet uh, for sales order entry, um, quite often that's in a, an environment where you're either on a sales call in front of a customer or you're in a retail environment perhaps where the customer is able to, to see the tablet uh, and place an order and this is something that uh, therefore needs to be designed uh, with that in mind. Uh, In-demand apps that extend ERP uh, would include things like sales order entries, we just said, but also order tracking, expense reporting, time and attendance applications, PO approval, asset management, management dashboards. And in terms of what they use in the device, the features and capabilities of the device, uh, camera, uh, GPS for geolocation, barcode scanning, address book dialing, voice recognition are all things that uh, many people are asking for incorporated into their apps. Now, as we look finally at the area of supply chain management, requirements for supply chain management mobile apps uh, include things like barcoded inventory, the ability to do cycle counts, shipment tracking, PO processing, uh, and even receiving and put away is basic uh, uh, warehousing type of function. Uh, in fact, according to the fourth annual UPS Global uh, Change in the Supply Chain Survey, two-thirds of all companies plan to improve their post-sales returns capabilities in 2014, while 71% have plans to reduce lead times. And so uh, RMAs might be another area uh, where uh, you're taking a look. Now, with uh, ERP data and 2D barcoding, uh, you know, these are not uh, going to go away. They're going to form a foundation uh, for supply chain analytics, which uh, is also going to continue to be increasingly demand on mobile devices uh, in 2014. So what are the trending use cases for custom enterprise mobile apps that leverage Microsoft Dynamics? What is it uh, that we're really talking about here that people uh, are doing and can't do? Well. First of all, there are a number of areas like uh, contact management, quote management, and so on. And so we're just going to go ahead and, and look at these primary functional areas and look at uh, examples of how uh, one would need to integrate uh, and, uh, and so forth. So when it comes to contact and calendar management uh, with integration of Microsoft Dynamics, there are other um, enterprise apps that uh, may be involved. Normally, it's going to be Outlook and Exchange Server, uh, but you might be in an environment where people are using Lotus Notes or Domino, uh, and Domino, I should say, uh, Google Mail, Google Calendar. Uh, there could be instant messaging and social feeds that need to be a part of uh, this environment as well. And so mobile apps for contact management um, often have to overcome this unified communication challenges, this multi-channel dimension of what we're talking about and be able to communicate using preferred and situational channels, including email, SMS, phone, interactive voice response, social media messages, social media status, etc. So there's a whole lot that can get involved in contact and calendar for management applications that interface with your Microsoft Dynamics ERP and CRM solutions. With quote management, we get to a more specific business case. Excuse me. And uh, you have integration targets that will uh, include other ERP and CRM systems, uh, your email server quite frequently. And mobile apps for quote management are typically going to conform to very specialized proprietary business uh, rules that reflect unique characteristics 
of your business model and products. And so usually when people need to create a quote management uh, application, it's because of the uniquenesses of their business and the way that their products uh, need to be quoted to their customers. Product configurators are similar. Uh, and often you'll have a full-blown back-end enterprise product configurator or perhaps a product lifecycle management solution with which you need to integrate in, in addition to uh, your uh, ERP and CRM solutions. And so mobile apps uh, for product configuration are really going to allow for things like multi-level nested bill of materials and parametric configuration that isn't a part of you know just a normal solution. And so it's a real really sophisticated and extended capability, but in some businesses it's just absolutely essential. Um, almost everyone has some requirement for catalogs and price lists, and having a mobile app for that, of course, is particularly valuable. Here again, not only are you integrating with ERP and CRM systems, but perhaps product lifecycle management, product configurators, and most importantly, uh, an existing e-commerce platform uh, where your mobile app may need to uh, interface with that e-commerce platform. So mobile apps that are really acting as catalogs and price lists can take on a variety of different forms. Uh, these can be standalone read-only catalogs, or they can be sales order entry front ends, uh, and they can even be customer-facing tablet apps uh, for field sales, uh, direct store delivery, retail point of sale, and so on. Now, the next category that we want to mention is order tracking. Order tracking is a very common requirement. People who are out of the office need to be able to answer the question, where's my stuff? And so uh, not only do you have your traditional uh, ERP and CRM targets, but also uh, your e-commerce platform, uh, UPS, FedEx, US Postal Service, and other uh, logistics uh, integration uh, touch points, uh, a common carrier uh, as well, and the logistics systems. This may even incorporate EDI messaging uh, integration and, of course, email and, and messaging solutions. So order tracking can be, uh, become a big integration uh, concern right away. And the mobile apps for order tracking uh, need to support uh, quite often both customers and partners and employees. And so things like barcoding and RFID and signature scanners might be uh, a requirement or they might not. It really just depends upon uh, how who, who your application is facing. In terms of order fulfillment, uh, mobile apps for order fulfillment are assisting people, uh, you know, who are in the warehouse, on the go, other staff, uh, with checking uh, inventory, pulling, picking, labeling, shipping, and confirming orders, you know, across the whole cycle of uh, fulfillment. Um, with integration to ERP and CRM, e-commerce, your logistics uh, apps, as mentioned before, but also to inventory uh, specialized systems, warehouse management systems that might be specialized. Uh, in the organization as well. And so creating uh, these apps uh, can also be uh, involved very important enterprise integration uh, concerns. Uh, when it comes to a logistics app, uh, mobile apps for logistics focus on things like transportation, warehouse management, order fulfillment, and they rely upon CRM data for customer information, and CRM systems need logistics data for a complete view of the customer. Uh, obviously, this is also interfacing with ERP. Uh, and you're going to find uh, similar uh, integration targets uh, to what we uh, just discussed. Now, e-commerce or mobile commerce is, of course, the whole idea of being able to sell uh, products and services via a mobile device uh, to uh, a customer. That a customer using a mobile device, either a smartphone or a tablet, uh, or some other uh, type of device such as a kiosk uh, and so forth. Uh, might need to actually uh, access <clears throat> and integrate uh, to an app that allows them to purchase products. So there are lots of people out there with e-commerce platforms, and these quite frequently are things if you're creating a custom mobile app for e-commerce that you're going to need to integrate with your existing online uh, e-commerce solution. And of course, a lot of them you know, have just very nice one-to-one -one uh, uh, pro uh, products available to allow customer to basically browse your entire uh, e-commerce uh, catalog. But in many instances, um, that's not really what businesses are looking for. They're looking for specialized apps that have e-commerce uh, capabilities built into them. And so these are 
tend to be special purpose apps with e-commerce. Now, e-commerce is just a huge topic. I mean, we're, we have uh, very specialized webinars that talk about just this subject. But uh, it's grown by about 40% from 2012 to 2013. Uh, mobile app platforms that reach across channels and de devices uh, are able to help you maximize your revenue, control costs, and increase responsiveness uh, to your customers' uh, uh, needs. And so businesses without linkage, linkage between e-commerce and e-commerce, or CRM and ERP, risk dealing with customers in a fragmented and frustrating way. So you don't want to have these disparate experiences where a customer who goes online orders something and then they uh, go to their mobile device and they want to order something else and their, their order history uh, isn't there. Uh, they're not able to track what they purchased. You know, you, you have to have, obviously, uh, uh, a single experience for that customer and treat the customer as uh, an individual and not just as a device user that's somehow separate from uh, the user of the, all the other devices that they, they may want to use uh, in their normal work day. Another example application for uh, integration to uh, Microsoft Dynamics applications, of course, is field service. Uh, and the integration points uh, will incorporate not only your traditional back-end ERP and CRM systems, uh, but also could incorporate inventory if you have, for example, spare parts that need to be used in the field and check on the availability of spare parts. Could interface with your transportation management solutions for routing and dispatching and so on. And so field service mobile apps focus on the field service technician and the field service supervisor. So you, you'll often have sort of two different uh, styles of users on a mobile app. Um, and then typically they're going to cover things like service requests, routing, dispatch, messages uh, to those who are in the field, on-site service, parts inventory, um, work order completion, being able to say, you know, job's done, uh, time accounting for that, uh, and sometimes even billing on-site uh, and, and dashboard views of uh, what's going on in the field, uh, particularly at the supervisor level. So there's a lot of dimensions that those field service uh, apps can take. But they're generally going to go across uh, the entire uh, field service life, life cycle, as you see illustrated here on the slide. Another important area, uh, mobile uh, point of sale. Um, and mobile apps for point of sale transactions are adapting to new payment types, including mobile payments. Uh, and information from Dynamics can contain customer preferences and contact information and needs to be updated when customers uh, are making purchases. And so. Uh, there are a number of uh, point of sale in-store systems uh, that allow uh, customers to interact with um, uh, the uh, um, provider of the app, you know, in, make, in terms of making purchases or uh, doing other things in the in-store environment uh, related to the point of sale. Uh, retail dashboards uh, is another popular requirement, more at the you know management level, obviously, but re retail dashboards help visualize things like revenue by location, salesperson, uh, by shift, by hour, by terminal, uh, line, product class, product, etc. So with CRM data, customer demographics and multi-visit behavior can also be represented in these retail dashboards. And the retail dashboards that are being uh, shown on mobile devices, especially on tablets, uh, help retail managers visualize results. Uh, with a mashup of CRM, point of sale, and in-store system information. So it's kind of taking all of the above uh, and then creating a coherent view of what's really going on in real time uh, in the organization uh, across a number of different ways of measuring that demographically. Sales dashboards are similar, but uh, obviously uh, in this case we're talking about probably more traditional organizations with field sales. And uh, these uh, will typically integrate not only with your ERP and CRM, but also uh, e-commerce and retail systems so that you get the full picture. Uh, and sales teams you know, are often requesting mobile uh, sales dashboards that reflect uh, the uh, KPIs that are unique to the industry, uh, the sales model, or even the specific business. So retail dashboards help sales managers visualize the results uh, from a mashup of CRM, ERP, e-commerce, point-of-sale, and in-store systems information. 
The next app is telephony uh, or SMS uh, related apps. Uh, the integration targets uh, are going to include a lot of your mail programs, of course, instant messaging, social feeds, and then even uh, SMS, interactive voice response, voice over IP, PBX, uh, um, uh, and so forth. So mobile apps interact with dynamics. We sometimes need to leverage uh, these uh, telephony capabilities and, in addition, uh, the phone features of the device itself. And so um, there are some very powerful things that can be done when uh, these apps, uh, mobile apps, can be tied into existing capabilities for uh, interactive voice response, SMS servers, and so forth. Now, in terms of things like Google Analytics, uh, the uh, Google Analytics API provides a lot of uh, powerful capabilities for the user of Dynamics because they can interact uh, more intelligently with users, and the mobile app then allows them to leverage those Google Analytics on the fly to identify and reveal customer segments that are based on online behavior, and you can have all of that wrapped up in a nice uh, mobile app uh, on your device. Uh, customer self-service is a very common requirement uh, where uh, Microsoft Dynamics customers are uh, looking to provide their own customers the ability to uh, help themselves with, uh, on their mobile devices and interact with uh, sales, with service, in a mobile portal that uh, keeps track of uh, ongoing customer interactions and relationships. Very popular in B2B uh, environments as well as some B2C environments as well. More in the B2C area, we would see things like coupon and e-loyalty apps where uh, you have uh, uh, an e-loyalty or a coupon system which is extended to a mobile device and Dynamics users need to be able to scan, validate, transact, and issue coupons from their mobile devices as well. And in addition, e-loyalty uh, offers are an important part of the whole customer activity. How do they respond? What is their history? Uh, and should be manageable and usable for mobile devices as well. So for businesses that are looking to get very creative in terms of the way that they make offers to their customer based on uh, customer behavior, customer location, uh, in permission-based location tracking and so on, these uh, are uh, very popular right now. So uh, those are a lot of things to take in, um, but what's some, like a, some specific examples, you know, in different industries of apps that, uh, that people are, are really using? Well, uh, we can see a, a return on investment in a number of different examples. Uh, one is VisaCal, which has a mobile card processing merchant services type app. Uh, it's a leading uh, credit card company handling, issuing, and clearing of major credit card brands and so forth. Now, with this uh, very you know uh, uh, nice uh, app, they're able to uh, have the uh, security and the robustness that's needed for something like uh, credit card uh, merchant transactions, and also give a fully native look and feel. Uh, to the apps on uh, the devices of choice and be able to do complete integration with back-end systems which are um, you know, in need of the uh, financial information or transaction information that's being processed. And so this uh, app uh, was relatively affordable to implement uh, and gave them an ability to uh, really uh, deploy more easily because it's App Store compatible, it's hardware independent. Um, they found that they had monthly subscription revenue from uh, this app and they had a 35% increase in new subscriptions and a reduced uh, service calls as well. So very, very exciting uh, kinds of results. Now, if we look at an industry like media and entertainment, uh, New Media Solutions uh, had a it really uh, a need that could cross a lot of industries uh, simply for the ability to you know, uh, look up invoices, look at the aging information, accounts receivable reporting. Uh, and in this uh, case, you know, they often had uh, end users who would call in to an executive uh, after hours and, and you know, say, what about this bill? How come you're charging me so much? And so they needed an app where they could just drill down, look at the accounts payable information, the invoices that are behind it, see you know 
how much this customer owes, and you know, really kind of handle this, this relationship level uh, management uh, from executive to executive of receivables issues. Um, and so the app uh, was uh, pretty uh, inexpensive to implement, uh, and they found that they were able to reduce disputes uh, tremendously because um, in the past when people called off hours, which is pretty common in this industry, they you know were often away from their desks and, and would have to delay the solution. And so being able to deal with it uh, in an online fashion was uh, very, very powerful with their mobile device. Warehouse management uh, in the manufacturing sector uh, is an important uh, tip use case as well. The DoveTrack system uh, is really ingenious in that it gives you full visibility of your warehouse even when you're not there, what people are doing, how, how productive they are. So you can have uh, a, a pretty low cost application to implement sits on top of the existing warehouse management system and uh, the back-end ERP system and allows people to, to see you know, what's going on in the warehouse. And so it can actually reduce the amount of supervision uh, that's required because people know that uh, if they're slacking, it's going to be immediately obvious. And they can actually get a phone call from the boss saying, I know I'm not there, but you know, what are you doing right now? There's no putaways uh, taking place. <coughs> Excuse me. So, really great uh, example of an app that uh, can be quite helpful. Now, in the healthcare arena, Boston Medical Center's asset manage application allows you to uh, really deal with allows them to deal with a large number of uh, service uh, requests across the hospital. Boston Medical Center, for those of you who are not from the area, is a major uh, academic uh, medical center, 500 beds located in Boston's south end. The hospital uh, is a teaching affiliate of Boston University School of Medicine, and it's the largest uh, safety net hospital in New England. Uh, the uh, application allows maintenance employees to scan locations for work orders, to open new orders, uh, and when we say scan locations, what that essentially means is there's a barcode uh, on the door of every room in the hospital. They scan that barcode, and it will tell them on their mobile device what work needs to be done in that room. Uh, it will also allow them to you know, uh, visually see that something needs to be done and open a new order. Uh, wherever they happen to be at in the facility. And of course, with offline mode, even if they're not connected at that moment, it still works. Now, uh, they can also photograph assets that uh, are things that need to be repaired or have been repaired, and scan the asset barcodes, record the geolocation details, and more. So that's an important capability of this type of an app. Um, these are not actual photos from the hospital. We had to add those in. but uh, the because uh, uh, we're not allowed to show the uh, real customer data, of course. But the uh, application gives them the ability to, like you said, use the camera, view the photo gallery, um, to attach an image, and um, you know, add notes to the job, uh, re refer it to shop if uh, that's necessary, uh, enter the completion code for that particular job, uh, and enter the other kinds of information that are important part of the asset management uh, function there and service function uh, in this uh, uh, example. So, uh, you know, great uh, example of how you can meet regulatory compliance requirements, uh, create efficiencies, uh, record locations, identify specific assets, and uh, achieve an ROI. So, we've been talking a lot about what you can do. Uh, how can we do this? How can we create um, an app for a uh, mobile user that's somehow connected and interrelates to information uh, that is in Microsoft Dynamics CRM, that is in Microsoft Dynamics ERP system. Uh, well, first of all, in order to do that, we want to think about uh, what does it mean to be uh, cross-channel, to be cross-platform, uh, and uh, 
why is that important to us as we're creating uh, applications? And of course, most of us know that there are a lot of mobile platforms. And the terminology here can get a little bit confusing because platform can be used in, in a lot of different ways. But in the context of mobile apps, when we say cross-platform, most people mean that it works on an iPhone, it works on an iPad, it works on an Android, it works on smartphones and tablets. That's that's cross-platform and cross-device, right? It works with Blackboard, BlackBerry, Windows, and so on. And then uh, it's expected that these cross-platform systems should facilitate multiple screen sizes and the in interface of that device, whether it's touch or keyboard or voice and so on, should have a native look and feel uh, and a variety of native deployment methods. So it should be able to deploy the way an app in that environment should deploy on the app store or in the enterprise server, or whatever it happens to be, uh, through an MDM system and so on. So that's cross-platform. But what do we mean when we say cross-channel or multi-channel? Well, when we talk about multi-channel platforms, uh, we're, uh, we're really providing support for application de uh, deployment options that go beyond mobile. So it includes mobile, the native RIA, or rich internet applications on a mobile device, a browser-based mobile deployment, a hybrid deployment that's partly native uh, cont client container and partly HTML5, but also um, in a multi-channel solution, we're really talking about things like rich internet applications in a desktop environment that, that extend across the internet and ut utilize a uh, non-browser uh, rich internet interface. Uh, we might be talking about desktop browser apps, you know, an app that runs in the browser on a desktop, a traditional uh, web app, if you will. We could be talking about networked clients, you know, traditional client server applications or ser server-side only applications running batch uh, functionality and even sort of uh, web services or SOA-related uh, interactions between systems that are based on web services and, and the Internet. So a multi-channel platform support is going to include standards like HTML and HTML5, XML, FTP, flat file, PDF, uh, the various message queues, uh, various databases, and on and on and on. And so a multi-channel solution can be very important because if you have a development uh, environment that can support this full broad range of deployment uh, requirements, then you're going to need fewer skill sets, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Excuse me. Just checking, checking on time here. Got a little bit more to cover, and then I'm going to be passing it over to Ryan. So these applications that we need to create are always on, uh, meaning that, uh, you know, uh, HTML5 is not always a satisfactory way of delivering an offline mobile app. Um, there's differing standards there that uh, people need to look at. And for this reason, a lot of developers are seeking to use Magic XK uh, application platform as a means of delivering what we would call an always-on mobile app. So what are the characteristics of an always-on mobile app? Well, offline programming um, requires you to overcome the limitations that are imposed by the challenges and constraints of working without a server connection. So if you're not connected, uh, you, have, you don't have a mobile signal, uh, the mobile connection is turned off on the, the phone or the tablet, whatever it might be, then uh, if you want to use the application, it has to have an offline mode. And in contrast to online programs, the server connectivity is either in these apps non-existent or unreliable, and so your apps need to be adjusted to handle this state very carefully uh, while creating an app that's usable and maintaining data integrity. So the challenge in offline programming is to keep the data consistent and synchronized while providing the user a meaningful experience uh, while they're disconnected. So the Magic XP app application platform obviously does that and a lot more. But uh, when we talk about the Magic XP application platform, we're talking about a platform that allows you to create apps that store a subset of the relevant server data or client-only data locally on the client. And Magic XP allows you to store the user credentials on the client for apps that require user authentication and in a Magic Offline program, data can be entered on the client and later updated for consistency with the server. So this means that Magic XPA now provides bi-directional data sync between 
the client and the server. And Max, Magic XBA ensures a seamless user experience when your connections are slow or lost, allowing uninterrupted operation and data consistency. An offline program is also going to access application resources locally on the client, such as application metadata and images. And new tools and features in Magic XBA allow developers to overcome offline programming challenges and provide users with a rich interactive experience regardless of connection issues. Since uh, Magic XP applications can work without network connectivity or with intermittent network connectivity, new application patterns uh, have to be considered. Uh, we'll refer you to the ebook for the details here, but uh, these are some of the things that you need to take into consideration. Startup, user authentication, local resources, master-to-master -master synchronization, and metadata synchronization. It's also important to look at the integration architecture to make sure it's scalable. With uh, the Magic XPI integration platform, we have a space-based architecture using an in-memory data grid, very much suitable for handling the challenges of big data uh, through unlimited virtual, vertical, and horizontal scaling. So the result is that you can have a single skill set. By uh, investing in Magic XPA and Magic XPI, uh, unlike typical native development and HTML5 JavaScript approaches, our end-to-end -end enterprise mobility solution leverages this single skill set for mobile application and development and all the other server-side and cross-channel application modes. And so instead of having to program in multiple languages, you're uh, you're developing your applications in Magic XBA and integrating them with Magic XBI. Now, the strategy uh, to execution uh, model that's shown here uh, really incorporates uh, the full life cycle of your application development, but across uh, the requirements that you're going to typically have in your organization, which are both, uh, you know, in terms of uh, tools, but also in terms of support. So Magic XPA application platform provides, you know, an ability to create the applications. The integration platform provides a service-oriented architecture-based process integration capability. Uh, the Magic Mobile Device Management solution gives you the capability for securing your devices, monitoring them, controlling them, supporting policy compliance, and then Magic, of course, offers professional services that you can utilize through uh, Magic Software or our business partners uh, to make sure uh, that all these technologies are working together perfectly so you can get the solution and not just the technology. Now, uh, when we're talking about development of native apps, uh, there is a, a methodology that is utilized which allows you to have uh, multiple client-side uh, with one development uh, per platform. That's kind of the old-fashioned uh, way of doing it. Um, and then uh, you can uh, have different developers that are working on the server side, whether it be in Ajax or PHP or Ruby, uh, and then you have point-to-point -point integration to all of these uh, you know, uh, third-party applications, including Microsoft Dynamics and so forth. Well, that's probably not the the greatest model because that would require multiple uh, tool sets. Uh, you could take a web development approach and there uh, you're simplifying things on the client side because you're using HTML5 but you're losing a lot of that native uh, look and feel in the process of doing that. Uh, and you still have all the server side technologies that you need to consider and all the integration uh, technologies and uh, integration points that uh, can become a challenge. So. Uh, what we really uh, suggest is, you know, one single development for multi-platform client server and integration, where you have uh, all of your client-side devices, uh, your server uh, uh, technology, and uh, the integration being handled by a consistent uh, technology stack rather than uh, stacks from uh, multi multiple vendors in order to solve this problem. The result is that you can you know, write once and deploy many. That's basically what we're talking about here. So that 
you know, things look different in iOS 7 versus iOS 6, Android 4, on different devices is going to look different, Windows 7 is going to look uh, different. So depending upon the channel and the device and the platform, uh, then the app is going to have a different native look and feel, which is what you want. So Magic offers a full uh, mobile offering that includes the multi-platform capabilities across the various uh, mobile platforms, the ability to integrate to CRM and ERP uh, and other solutions, ability to deploy with a native client, a native uh, client container uh, that uh, is uh, downloadable from uh, the App Store, uh, sizing that application to any form factor, uh, taking a hybrid approach when that's uh, important to your organization. If you have existing investment in HTML5, you can leverage that. And then, of course, uh, the very powerful capabilities for uh, back-end integration. So Magic XPI is the uh, integration platform that Magic offers, and it provides the ability to integrate applications and technologies uh, in a way that produces uh, a continuous business pr process spanning multiple applications. It leverages an in-memory data grid, which is uh, based on space-based architecture, has a very high degree of fault tolerance, elastic scalability, uh, and really provides you with the reliability and operational integrity uh, that's uh, so important in today's business. So this uh, very comprehensive approach to enterprise architecture from a diagrammatic standpoint might look something like this, where you see that there are both the technology protocol adapters as well as the enterprise application adapters that allow you to uh, perform all of the functions that, of the uh, magic servers, the orchestration, the transformation, the routing, uh, transaction, monitoring, and management, all on an architecture which is extremely uh, grid-oriented for both cloud and on-premise. You have what you might call shared nothing architecture uh, with in-memory messaging, asynchronous and synchronous uh, context and communication management, and again, scalable and uh, very importantly secure. Uh, in fact, more secure than the typical uh, mobile app for a number of reasons, one of which all of the uh, communications between uh, the server and the app can be encrypted. Uh, uses industry standard um, um, user authentication uh, methodologies uh, and also being that it's not in the browser, um, you really gain uh, a, a level of uh, a protection there as well because the browsers are just such a common point of attack for so many uh, of those who have, uh, you know, various intentions on, uh, in terms of uh, uh, breaking security on an app. So Magic uh, is going to give you, uh, you know, a, a team uh, approach, uh, you know, uh, to a solution, but you're not going to need multiple tools. So your team can uh, uh, focus on in one uh, development and integration environment. You don't need multiple teams for each operating system. Uh, you don't need another team for the server environment or to handle mobile integration. And you don't need to be locked into, you know, one mobile technology. So if you have the right partner, uh, Magic's going to help you, you know, I think in a number of ways. First of all, to deliver projects through a professional services team, if that's part of your requirement. Uh, obviously, training, uh, guidance and support through online technical support, telephone technical support, uh, and Magic is providing solutions such as hosting and other related services as well. So uh, what we want to do um, is uh, refer you to uh, materials that are available uh, on our website. Uh, and you will be uh, receiving email, if you have not already, uh, regarding the ebook related to today's presentation. But at this point, what I'd like to do is actually open it up for a demonstration of uh, the capabilities. And in order to do that, I'm going to change the presenter to Ryan Beck. And Ryan, uh, you're now the presenter, so you can take it away. OK, great. Go ahead and do that. Can you hear me OK, by the way? Glenn? OK, hope I'm coming in loud and clear. 
We hear so, you. Great. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a live demonstration of how we can hook a mobile app uh, into a data source and use um, and basically use uh, Microsoft Dynamics as an outside application, as a connected application from our mobile app. So I have here um, Magic XPA up. It's, of course, our application development platform. And I just opened up a sample uh, demo that, uh, that we have available. It's just an actual uh, application that uh, is, was designed for mobile environments. So you see it has like a small window because it's designed for a tablet. And actually, there's also a lot of pages on it that are designed to work on smaller uh, platforms, such as this one is actually designed to work on a phone. So you see it's got a much uh, thinner screen. And uh, you know when you click on it, it's like you as if you touched on it. I only have to single click for it to open up the next page, because that's more or less how a phone works, right? So what I want to do is um, is hook this application into uh, Microsoft Dynamics, and there's no um, it doesn't have a uh, a straight way to get into it because there's no um, Dynamics doesn't have um, basically a really easy API that you would want to hook your mobile device into. So what we end up doing is we actually use, are able to use Magic XPI as the intermediary to connect our mobile application, which could be deployed on iOS, Android, Windows, uh, BlackBerry, etc., to our dynamic CRM, which is probably hosted in-house, but it could also be hosted um, with a third party, um, such as like Microsoft or some other uh, reseller of, of Dynamics. So we actually can connect it to really any, any, no matter where it's at, even if it's not hosted in the cloud. If you have it in-house, we can make that work anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, use Magic XPI, and I don't have a pre-written integration. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of write it as we go. So I'm going to um, create a new project called um, uh, Mobile CRM and say OK. And this is the developer studio where we write integration flows. And we basically define all the different endpoints that we want inside of our project and connect them. And what I'm going to do is first um, get my connection to dynamic CRM done. Like I said, it can work in-house or not. As you can see, this IP address up here is a, an internal IP. So I'm going to be connecting to um, one that's actually at our headquarters in, uh, in Tel Aviv. But um, it could be anywhere else. You'll see we do support um, on-demand with either partner hosted or Microsoft hosted, but this one just happens to be on premise. So that's the one we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and validate and see if it connects. You can see it's working on the connectivity to Dynamics right now. And we were able to connect. Great. So what I'm going to do is on our flow, I'm going to go ahead and create a um, a flow that can do a uh, Send a account. Let's make a new account in Dynamics as a for instance. So we'll make a field called name, um, address, uh, let's say city and phone. Okay. And we're going to go ahead then and, and grab a Dynamics CRM component right here. It's drag and drop a configure. All I need to do is just drag this thing over and drop it. And what it's going to do is browse my Dynamics environment and see what entities I have. So if you have like custom objects or anything like that, we'll see them. It, the, the idea behind the component is not only does it make the connectivity dynamics easy, it also is aware of the schema. So we can um, go ahead and, uh, and do really simple transactions like add, update, create, delete, del um, delete here, assign an account. Um, so it makes it really uh, straightforward to connect to. We don't have to learn about the web services or how dynamics wants us to send XML. Um, we just basically choose we want to talk to an account, hit map, and then I can go ahead and um, just create our data source here real quick. Uh, I'm going to come from a couple of variables that we made, and I'll map them in. So on the right side, I see very simply the dynamics, uh, all the fields available on that object I chose in dynamics. So, and over on the left, I've got my variables, so I'll just map some things over that might make sense. So I'll map the address. Um, let's put the city across. Uh, where's the phone number? And really the only required field in all of this is you have to have a name on an account. So I'll go ahead and map the name over. Everything else is just optional. It's all metadata. 
Okay, so there's my mapping. It's very simple. You could map as many fields as you want. I figure four is enough to, uh, to make this work. All right, so there's my flow. This is a component that's going to do the add to CRM. I need a way to invoke it. So in, um, what I actually want to do is create a RESTful interface that the Magic XTA server is going to call. So I'm going to create um, a uh, just an endpoint for it to call and pass in, um, I'll call it create account. And I'll make it pass in um, our variables like name, um, what do we got, city, well, we got address. And uh, phone. So these are basically incoming parameters that could come in from an outside uh, application. And it's actually we're going to create a sample file here that's going to show me how I can um, go ahead and uh, call this really simply. All right, I'll say OK, OK, OK. Um, I'm going to assign that trigger, that HTTP web page we did to this flow. And with a couple clicks, we've got our mapping. OK, so now what happens is I have a, a, restful, inter, a restful URL I can call that when it's called, it will invoke this add component and pass some variables into it. And we can see our um, new account cr get created in CRM. So I'm going to try that real quick. And um, I'll bring up the web page that, um, that Magic just made. It gives us a really simple way of just calling it to see if it works, right? Um, just invoking our flow and seeing how it goes. So if I uh, turn on the debugger, the debugger interface is all built in. I don't have to um, I don't have to do any outside uh, applications or anything like that. I can actually um, really debug it right in the studio where I'm creating it. So it's very nice. Uh, if I go into my accounts here um, in uh, Dynamics, we'll see which ones we have available. There's two of them in there now. One I'm called David. One I'm called Lori. I'll make a new one. Um, called Glenn, and we'll uh, put him in, uh, uh, let's just say, Vegas. And there's a mocked up phone number, and I'll hit this. And when I push this button, after a couple seconds, well, you should now be able to come over to the other side and, and see the account uh, getting created in Dynamics. It'll take a second because it's actually having to log into the server the first time to do it. The other thing we'll see is on the HTTP, the, the, uh, re, the callback to the web services um, component. Oh, I didn't hit play. <laughs> I forgot to actually uh, turn on the, the server, so I'll have to do that real quick. You don't normally jump from development to deployment so quickly, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, usually not. It's fine. All right, we'll give it another shot. I'll have to see if it says it's still running. Well, it's not. What I can do is I can jump to another one I have working. Okay. So we'll try that one more time. I'm going to uh, browse to where I've got that. So we'll try that one more time. Uh, let's try. All right. I actually reversed the uh, address and city, so that's fine. You'll see it on the other side come through the same way. So 
So what I'll do is on the uh, dynamic side, I'll go back into our accounts, and I'll see that the new uh, account came in. Also back on the on the on the browser where I see we called the REST interface, I'll actually see the uh, information have come in this way. So I'll get back the ID number of the new record that was created, and I'll, it'll tell me that if there's an excess, or it might tell me if there's an error as well, which we could display on the mobile application um, if there was some kind of data validation error. But actually, you can see it's pretty uh, it's pretty accepting, given that I actually was able to reverse <laughs> the street name and the city, but that's okay. So. Uh, we're going to do this now, but from uh, the whole way through from the mobile app. So now instead of calling it like this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to do it back up, and I'm going to call a version of this um, with a um, with a get URL, just because I want to see um, something. So I'm going to put in I'm going to put in some uh, mock-up variables here and call it again. And I'm going to show you when we call this now, we actually have those uh, parameters in the URL, so I can use those back in our mobile application. So in our mobile app, I'm just going to make a new program. I'm going to call it Add Customer, and go into it, and we'll make it a uh, a batch task. You don't have to worry too much about this. And we'll make a couple variables. So I'll make a new one called. Um, Let's make one called name. We'll make that dynamic. And we'll make another one called uh, result. And what I'll do now is I'm going to go into uh, the logic and say that at, right after we, as we start to create a new um, account, we're just going to do a simple um, uh, update of our uh, of a variable here. And we're going to update that with calling the magic XPI application. So I'll go here and I'll say HTTP get, and I'll paste in our URL. Um, but before I, but instead of just that, I'm actually going to go ahead and make some of it a bit more dynamic. I'm going to uh, make the, um, I'm going to use the the name from the application instead of just putting a hard coding and putting Glenn's name in there. So the name is uh, coming from uh, BW. And there we go. All right. So there's our our call to the magic to the magic XPI server. Just a simple HTTP get. We can do a lot of. There's actually a lot of ways that uh, they can call each other because it's all one technology stack. So um, let me back out. Let me put some data into the name. So who we want it to be? Let's make another new one called uh, Ryan. All right, we'll test it and see if it passes the checker, which it didn't like one thing. Um, oh, because it's got to be, got to have a size to it. Okay, it's ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this uh, this flow to call that other application. So I'll push F7. It'll debug it. And from the other side, uh, the Magic XPI side, I can actually look and see um, HTTP calls come in from the other side. So here it is at 10.58. I actually see an HTTP call come in. So I'm pretty confident that if I go back to uh, my Dynamics application, where we passed in, uh, we should be able to um, refresh our accounts again and see data that came in all the way from the other side. So if I go into, um, let's see here, you know, this one. We can start to see the data that was passed in A, B, C, D. So that's actually coming from our application. So we need to do a little bit more work on it to um, to figure out why it's passing that. Like for instance, if I went in here and said, "All right, let's not pass um, this. Let's go in and put. Uh, let's see here. Let's make the city be um, I don't know Detroit, and let's make the name be." Ryan. And I'll hit OK and back out of here and try it one more time. And after it runs, again in the dynamics, we can see the uh, change right away by clicking accounts. 
and there it is. So we've got end-to-end -end connectivity from our mobile app, which we deploy on any app, any any mobile uh, device, into uh, Magic XPI and then into Dynamics, all within I don't know. I think I had about 15 minutes to do that. So it's really easy to build and really easy to get running with. Um, it's just a matter of uh, of mapping a couple more fields, obviously, to make it a more useful uh, useful application. But really, what you can do is then hook that um, that magic app that we wrote inside of our our our, uh, our mobile app. And anytime and if someone pushes a button or or looks at a contact, you can make it send that information to Dynamic CRM, or you can make it get information back. So we've just created a um, a a pipeline of data very easily from a mobile device, which could be anywhere in the world, to our Magic XPI server here in, in, in uh, Southern California, then to a dynamic CRM server that's all the way around the world, uh, all inside of you know a couple of minutes. So, Glenn, I'll, I'll stop for any questions, but I think we might be a little short on time. So, thank you very much, Ryan. I think we're actually right up against the window here, so um, I'm going to uh, cut the questioning short today. But I want to thank you very much for the uh, your attention, uh, and uh, if you um, would like to uh, email in any questions uh, after attending today's webinar or viewing the recording, uh, please by all means do. Uh, once again, thank you, Ryan. Thanks to all of you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next Magic Software webinar.